Hi, this is Jake Wallace with Envirosight, and today I'm going to show you an app that's used to control our QuickView Air HD zoom inspection camera. This camera attaches to a pole and is lowered into a manhole to inspect sewer pipes using high-powered zoom optics and collimated illumination projected from the front of this camera body. We've developed an app that displays HD video from the camera and allows control of the various camera functions, including its tilt, safely from street level. The first step in operating this camera is to turn it on by pressing this button right here. The next step is to connect to the camera. As you see when the app launches, it can't see the camera over Wi-Fi because we haven't established the Wi-Fi connection to it. Yet from this interface, we can still access basic things like license information, both for the app itself and for GStreamer, a video library that we've implemented in it. We can change app settings, such as language, uh, various Wi-Fi preferences, whether it uses standard or metric measurements, uh, and whether you can zoom the camera to its full extent using a double tap function. We can also configure the directory to which video and still images are stored if we don't want to use the standard date stamped directories. And finally, we can look at various media that the app has saved from previous sessions, including still images, and video. So now, we'll briefly toggle over to settings and connect to this quick view camera. You'll see there are two options for connection, standard connection and view only connection. Standard connection allows you to view inspection video and control various functions of the camera. View only is for secondary connections where people want to view the inspection that's happening but somebody else is already controlling it. So for the sake of demonstration, we'll first connect using a standard connection. And as you can see, live video comes up and we can control functions such as illumination uh, using various sliders. Now I'll tour you through various elements of the interface. Starting at bottom right with the flashing warning sign, this is where alarms are viewed and logged. Uh, so if that warning sign is blinking, that means there's an active alarm. You can click it to see what's happening. And we see that the internal pressure of the camera is too low. Uh, the internals of this camera are pressurized to prevent water ingress. Uh, not a lot of pressure, just about 5 PSI. So that's an active alarm. We can also view past alarms under the warning log. And we can look at various system information. Um, including the version of the firmware that's installed on the board within it, uh, how many hours it's been active, the current temperature inside the camera head, as well as the humidity and pressure. We can also see the current that the tilt motor is drawing. And to be able to do that, we have to operate the tilt motor. That's what these plus and minus signs are for. And lastly, there's an onboard inclinometer so that when you're viewing directly down the center line of a pipe, you can get a sense for the grade of that pipe. Uh, this is the reading that we're getting off the inclinometer at the moment. To the left of the alarm is an illumination control panel with a slider that allows you to go from essentially uh, no illumination to maximum illumination. The lightning bolt on top is for illumination boost. 
Uh, when you go to maximum illumination, boost is automatically activated, but the system may deactivate it based on temperature. Um, Internal uh, safety interlocks uh, read the temperature and throttle back the illumination boost um, if excessive uh, temperature is approached. Above that is the focus panel. By default, the system is on autofocus, so as you zoom down the pipe, the camera automatically focuses on the features that are within the field of view. You can turn this off to fine tune and then use the minus and plus keys to adjust focus accordingly. Clicking AF discards the manual focus setting uh, and returns it to autofocus. Above that is an indicator for the strength of the Wi Fi signal. This is the text writing panel. As you can see, uh, various texts are overlaid on the video signal. Um, and this is where that's configured and toggled off and on. So when we open up configuration, we can see there are various dynamic variables we can choose to show, including date and time, uh, zoom setting, illumination intensity, uh, the inclination in degrees, and the GPS coordinates as measured by the tablet. We can also enter user-defined text. In addition, we can adjust the appearance of the text, selecting a color and position. When I hit apply, this text, which is generated by the camera, automatically reconfigures according to the parameters that I entered. This button over here toggles off and on the text overlay. Next, we have a configuration screen for where we choose to store photos and video. This is a similar configuration option to the one that I showed in the pre-connection screen. Uh, basically, if you don't want to use the date stamped folder that's automatically created for photos and videos, uh, you can set the location um, by creating uh, a new folder within this directory. This button here accesses the media gallery that we saw before. Um, we're now in the folder that I just created called test. But we can go back to earlier folders and see the information there. Up here um, are three status bars. Uh, yellow shows illumination intensity and correlates to the yellow color of this illumination panel. Orange shows magnification and correlates to the controls for zoom. And red shows inclination uh, and that correlates to the controls for tilt over here on the side. Here we have a function that controls various camera parameters, including the ability to flip the picture, a function called picture enhancement, which essentially changes uh, some exposure settings, another function called defog mode, uh, which is designed to disregard uh, some of the illumination spread and glare that can happen when there's moisture in an atmosphere like the interior of a sewer pipe. And also a toggle for auto shutter, which is on by default, 
but if you deselect it, you can set the shutter manually. In certain instances in a pipe, it helps to be able to adjust the shutter manually for optimum exposure in difficult conditions. Next, we have a video button, which allows you to start recording video. The flashing red indicates that video is recording. Uh, and then you can proceed with performing your inspection. Uh, you can pause video in the middle of recording, or you can just stop it. And we'll stop this. You can also take still images. If you want to hide these controls to prevent them from obscuring the footage you're looking at, you can select the full screen button and toggle it away again. These indicators up here show the remaining battery life for the zoom camera head as well as the tablet. And then over here are the controls for zoom in orange. So pressing up allows you to zoom in. Pressing down allows you to zoom out. And then these red buttons control the tilt of the camera. Once you've completed your inspection and wish to power down the camera, you simply press X here and a dialog asks you whether you want to power down the camera or just exit the inspection mode. We'll switch off the camera right now. With the camera switched off and disconnected, we find ourselves back in the initial connection panel. Obviously, because the camera is powered down, there are no connections uh, that we can initiate. But we can still go in and look at the media that we captured. The two still images. Uh, and clicking them allows you to open them. Um, you can delete if you wish. And the video we took. These buttons at the bottom allow you to go back to the beginning of the video, pause it, take a still, a still image from it uh, and select the directory you want to save it to. Or discard the video. Finally, to exit the app, we just press X up here. So thanks for taking this quick tour of our new Quick View Inspection app. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact uh, our developer, Michael Bueller, or me. Um, I'm one of the product managers. My name is Jake Wells.